Hi, this is Pat Moorhead. Welcome back to the 6-5 Summit. Day one, here with a friend of mine, GB from Analog Devices, talking the connected intelligent edge. GB, how are you? Pat, I'm doing great and uh, really, really fantastic to be here with you at the summit and in the new role and talking to you again, again for the first time. So always I know. A it, listen, it was great to watch what you were doing in your previous career. Uh, it's it's really awesome to see what you're doing uh, at Analog Devices. Looks like you're having fun. Uh, you know, I'm seeing you in intern shots, welcoming the crew. Uh, flying around the world again to to talk uh, talk to different employees. Re really exciting to see. Thank you, thank you. I'm learning a ton. Anytime you make a move like that, as you know, Pat, in your career, it's just you you hit that accelerator on the learning curve, and it's just been it's just been a wonderful time, yeah. and I've really enjoyed it so far. Well, it's hard to believe it's only been a a little over a year as right. as president of of the GBU. Can you tell me about a little bit about the role? And what brought you uh, to the company? Yeah, sure. So at Analog Devices, I run the global business unit. So basically, uh, Vincent Roche, our chairman and CEO, has consolidated all the businesses uh, into a single uh, organization under me, which has been great. So I've got responsibility, for example, for all the R&D of the company. Um, but if you just take a step back, I think, you know, you and I, we've been around for a while now. We've worked together for a while. I've been in the industry for more than 30 years. Yeah. Um, and the thing that I've always had a passion for, and, and you know, you and I have done this together, is, is really just the application of tech. It's not just technology for technology's sake. It's the application of technology to solve complex problems and to have an impact on people and on the world. And then I always add at scale. And I think yes. that was really what drew me to analog devices. Um, I met Vince through a mutual acquaintance of ours. And I had heard of analog devices, as I think many people that would be listening had heard of analog devices, but I didn't really know the company well. Obviously, great reputation for engineering, been around for almost 60 years. But when I got to know Vince, and I really, and I, and I really understood the history of the company and how Analog had kind of put together four franchises. So Analog Devices, Hittite, Linear, Tech, Maxim into this kind of powerhouse of analog mixed signal RF power uh, technology. And then furthermore, was kind of transforming and, and focusing on solving bigger problems and moving up the stack and focusing on solutions. I mean, for me, that was that was really exciting. And, you know, just like any prospective uh, employee, I went out to the website. I was looking at the Signals Plus right. page on the website, looking at these solutions in healthcare and automotive and industrial consumer. And it just blew me away. I mean, there's a ton of innovation happening in the company. I think it's one of the best kept secrets in the industry. Um, I used to tease my kids, Pat. I'd be like, I defy you to find a technology that doesn't have or a a product that doesn't have some ADI component in you. I like, I defy it, even <laughs> though you've never, I defy you to do that, even though you've never heard of it. Um, and, and I think, you know, for me, it was this kind of combination of, you know, the vision for the future, uh, the purpose of the company, and then, you know, the people and Vince and the leadership team that I met that, that, that led me to come over to, to analog devices. Yeah, I love that. Hopefully, uh, you know, your kids weren't uh, unboxing <laughs> your car or your TV or, yeah, you know, or yeah. thing behind the scenes. So, uh, GB, you're one of the few uh, senior executives in the industry that has seen the world from a lot of different areas. And, you know, whether it's the smallest endpoint at the edge or the largest hyperscaler uh, data center and 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 everything uh, in between, and you've really had a front row seat uh, in the way in compute and data workloads have changed over the past uh, decade decades. And so I'm curious, um, what do you think is unique about where we are today, and where do you think compute is going in the future versus, let's say, this you know client mobile and and cloud era. Yeah, that that's that that. Thank you. That's a great question. And you're right. I think you know we, as you know, the, you know, my generation obviously grew up, and we got to go through a few now major eras of computing back when it was mainframe when I was a kid and in school yeah. through kind of PC internet and cloud mobile. 
Um, and the, and and through that time, as you know, semiconductor industry grew to be five hundred billion dollar industry, right? Yeah. Over the last fifty years, and you know Moore's law, and you know was a heartbeat of the industry, if you will, or kind of a beacon of the industry over that period of time. And there was and and, and innovation really drove successive ways of growth in the industry. I you know I'm really excited because I think as we go forward in the next decade, we think semi, semiconductor industry is going to double. Now, just inside the next 10 years, $2 trillion or somewhere around a trillion dollars. And that growth is not just being driven, as you kind of alluded to, by centralized computing, you know, highly optimized workloads running on specialized platform. But it's 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 being driven by the innovation and the demand for more intelligence at the edge of the network and closer to where data is being created, right? And closer to the physical world. So, and I think that is being underpinned by what I like to say is like several secular growth drivers across a lot of industries as everything moves to be more digital and connected. And um, I always love to use examples, Pat, you know, I came over to the company and, and one of my favorite examples in automotive and electric vehicles is like battery management systems, you know, like right. battery management system. How what? is that? Uh, how is that an intelligent edge or an intelligent computing device? But actually, you know, this company analog, we were the first to put out a wireless battery management system. And it has intelligence to like deeply understand through sensing and algorithms, the state of charge and the state of health of a battery. And if you understand that deeply and you put the right intelligent solution around it, you can actually extend the range of a car by up to 20%. And, and furthermore, by making these solutions intelligent and wireless, you can make it more modular. You can make it easier for, you know, in this case, automobile OEMs to manufacture their products. You can, you can improve their time to market, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, across all these industries, I think we are starting to clearly see cases where having more intelligence at the edge near that sensor is delivering some real benefit. Yeah, I mean, I started my career right in the middle of uh, when mainframes were, I mean, they still are, are going, but right in the middle, started my career in 1990. Uh, and so I saw a lot of mainframes, but kind of watching, watching us go, um, and it's funny, technology is never, it's never, uh, or it's typically and, right? That's right. Uh, I guess mini computers went away, but uh, mainframes to minis to client server, smartphone, tablets, moving the intelligent edge, uh, moving the intelligence to the edge, it makes sense historically, right? Because compute and information processing has always found its way closest to where that data was being created. Yeah. And part of that is 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 efficiency. Otherwise, we would all be, you know, still be using 3270 tubes plugged into uh, an IBM uh, mainframe and including, you know, cars. But that's just not the case because it's not the most efficient way uh, to move forward. But we do throw this intelligent. I mean, the, the, the name of this track is the Connected Intelligent Edge. I'm throwing around um, the word intelligent edge. How do you define intelligent edge when you say that just just so we're on the just so we're on the same page here no that's great and you know it's funny i get that i get that question a lot and uh you know what's and, and i think people have their their versions of the definition for us right. and for me intelligent edge is really the intersection of the physical and the digital world you know a lot of folks when they say intelligent edge they mean edge of the cloud or they mean edge of the network they might right. need some gateway that's going into a factory you know, for me and, and for, for analog and our customers, we're focusing on what I would say is the edge of the edge, right? It's that it's right. that physical, the digital boundary, which is is kind of the unique role that that we that we play in the industry. And when I'm talking to the customers and I've been out now with hundreds of customers so far, uh, you know, over the last little more than a year, and they are increasingly working to create applications and systems and there and those systems need to be more autonomous and you know this uh, pat you know it's it's all about kind of real time you know decision making in real time acting in real time and and that need is critical and the challenge as you know is it's a constrained environment the intelligent edge is constrained you know why not do everything at the edge it's constrained it's constrained by power and energy it's constrained by latency it's constrained by space it's constrained by cost it's constrained by weight it's constrained you know, and the need for performance. So that's what makes it to me, 
challenging. It's what makes it exciting. It what makes it's what make it makes the intelligent edge you know fun and challenging is that trying to create that intelligence, that ability to act in real time while addressing all of these constraints at kind of a system or an application level, which is which is what you know our partners and customers are looking for, and it's it's why we focus so much on kind of co-creating with our customers and. Right. Um, yeah, I think one of the examples that I had was uh, that, that that's interesting. Like industrial, everyone knows digital. You know, factories are becoming more digital. They're automating. There's a labor shortage broadly in the world. There's yes. reshoring that reshoring that's happening. So now, one of the things that that uh, I'll give you an example that we focused at at the edge was kind of this uh, a platform for motor or motion control inside of a factory. And if you step back, we know that like seventy percent of the world's energy is used in industry and buildings, we know that 40 to 50% of electricity is used in kind of e-motors and, and motors more broadly. And, you know, by building a, by building a platform, an intelligent edge platform, again, in a constrained environment, we know if we can more precisely measure control, you know, uh, uh, drive the efficiency of these motors, we can have, we can have a massive impact on energy consumption. Yes. It, like we can, we can target like 20% even more of energy consumption, and that's a we've got a platform to do that called Trinamic Motion Control. But it's all about using that intelligence at the edge to reduce energy consumption. Another example, just totally on the opposite end of the intelligent edge spectrum, is like in healthcare. Um, we've got a digital healthcare business, and you know we could probably talk for an hour on how consumer and healthcare are kind of coming together. Between you know, kind of this, you know, fitness and health are kind of merging in some areas. But we worked with a startup called Vitruvian over in Europe. They're taking what was kind of a, you know, a smartwatch, right. right, that had functions like, you know, steps and heart rate and oxygen level. And they're using it now with some complex algorithms that we've developed with them to, to actually give very accurate and detailed, you know, health information, not just to the consumer, but to the healthcare provider. So, I mean, these are just total you know opposite There's ends of the so spectrum many both great examples, examples of the intelligent edge yeah so i research a lot of companies who talk about you know addressing the intelligent edge i think your description of it is is unique in, in the way that you're 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 looking at it when i peel back some of the uh, verticals and and in use cases there, there is some similarity what is it that sets adi apart from the competition here yeah, that, that, no, that's thank you for that. I think the, you know, maybe a couple couple ways to come at that question. One is, I think, you know, we talk about intelligent edge and the approach. I think our focus is on intelligence. I, I actually think intelligence is the operative yeah. word, right? And it used to be in the old days of analog, it was like, well, can you recover a signal? That was that was intelligence. <laughs> can you recover the signal? Then it became, well, can you? Can you can you do the conversion? Can you make the, can you turn that signal into data? And that was right. intelligence, and that was the value add. Now, fast forward to today. Now it's it's okay. Well, can you take the data and give me understanding and insight and drive action and create value? And you know, increasingly, as you know, that's through you know applying you know AI assisted you know acceleration and algorithms and techniques as well as you know secure connectivity, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the notion of, I think, intelligence, the definition of intelligence, what we mean has shifted dramatically in the industry and for us. And I think one of the things that makes us most unique, I mean, one, it's, as I said before, we are at the intersection of the physical and the digital world, which I right. believe drives you to have to understand the physical domain better than anyone. Like the, the physical domain, uh, you know, that that sensing, that understanding, that depth is critical. But the second is, we kind of, we start with a customer application, Pat, and we work kind of edge in. I think, you know, there are a lot of companies that I've worked with in the industry and a lot of, you know, um, a lot of my prior life, it was kind of working core out. Yes. Right. It was data center out, big compute out. But I think if you start with your where your customer is, which is at the application and at the application and you work your way in it's 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 pretty unique uh that approach is pretty unique and i think you know you uncover a lot of insights and uh again it kind of like what jumped to my mind when i was when i was thinking about that is i you know i was just over in uh in asia uh meeting with our customers 
you obviously know we have a huge position in 5G base stations. That's right. And a great example of that is like, okay, well, if you work with your customers, like ORAN customers, 5G base stations, and you kind of go edge in, you know, we've developed an, an entire, you know, base station reference platform. I mean, we're talking radio units, software stack, ASIC, software defined transceivers, signal processing algorithms, power solution, you know, all that stuff at the edge to optimize for performance and power and kind of create a breakthrough architecture that they can build on. So I was talking to, you know, Samsung, NEC, others are adopting it. And then you work backwards and say, now, how can I, yeah. now, how can I, how can I deliver the entire solution kind of edge to cloud? But, but uh, just, it's a great example of how we're, how we're coming at the problem differently, I think, than some of our, our competitors. Yeah, it's definitely different. And, and as I kind of look at the, the, edge and and how it is evolved i mean there used to be islands that were not connected and really didn't share data anywhere and then we got into this hey m to m uh state uh which everything was bespoke there were no standards and we still weren't getting the data out uh, of the edge that we wanted to, to to activate on and one of the things that really inspires me about this new era of intelligent edge is that uh, we have standards, uh, it's, there's interconnectivity, and more than not, businesses are really getting around this idea that it's data and information, if they want to do anything with automation, increase efficiency, uh, supply their customers better, or even have different models, do something as a service. I ran into a company that used to sell, just sell oxygen bottles to manufacturers. And now they're selling oxygen as a service, right? Because they've put connectivity and these incredible meters on the edge completely fundamentally changed their business model, uh, which right. made their customers happier and them more profits, uh, which is all oh, good. So you have over 125,000 customers out there. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I'm assuming like most companies with that many customers, some of it are held directly, but a lot of it's uh, uh, through the uh, through the channel. Sometimes to describe the edge, because there's so many verticals and so many customers, uh, is hard to do. I think you've done a good job highlighting a lot of these these use cases. But there is a, is there any parallelization or actually merging applications again across this broad base uh, of customers out there? Yeah. Um, uh, and solving their problems like like highest ROI type of challenges. No, that's 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 a great question. That's a great question. Uh, you're right, and I think if you think about where we started, Pat, at the very beginning with the different eras of computing, I mean, one of the things that's kind of transcended certainly the last two eras, and as we move forward, is is building platforms. You know, and I think sometimes when you think about various industries, and you're right, today I think uh, you know in the industrial segment and in, you know broader industry, energy very fragmented uh, space today still. And our customers are struggling with a lot of complexity, as, as you say. And I think the key for us as we go forward are to create platforms. And I think we saw platforms emerge in the PC internet era. We certainly saw platforms emerge in cloud and mobile. And I think even in places, like if you think about uh, uh, autonomous vehicles, electrification now in the automotive industry, you're starting to see some uh, horizontal and vertical platforms, Pat, emerge, right? Yeah. So I, I, I actually believe that that can we can apply that, that conceptually and take t take various architectures into industrial, for example, and really help customers innovate and take out some of the complexity. And I think that's the that helps us create um, value. And as I said, you know, whether you're addressing a latency problem and for autonomous driving or a po power problem in a wearable or data problem in a smart factory, you know, God knows we haven't even talked about, you know, that and, and something we're really focused on inside the company is a security platform because as you connect things, the attack surface goes up. So doing that in a scalable way uh, by building platforms is important. And as I came to the company, one of the things that Vince and I talked about was, hey, we've got to build a software divine version of ourselves. Now think about that as like what used to be an analog <laughs> component company now right. building analog digital software security ai accelerated solutions which is what we're doing right and then saying okay now i've got to actually up my game i've got to create various levels of abstraction 
so that customers can focus on building their applications and their systems and not worry about all this stuff that's going on, you know, underneath underneath the covers down below. Um, otherwise, that complexity is crushing. So, you know, kind of to your, I answer the question a little bit different way, Pat, but I, I think that to me, that is the key. That would be, an, that's an incredible way to um, unleash innovation and value in what today is still a fairly fragmented and, and, and complex uh, application I mean, space. I think it's a good answer. Uh, if nothing else, what I notice across my research of the semiconductor companies that are doing the best, they don't just show up with a bag of parts like yeah, we right. used to 20, 30 years ago. They're showing up with, with a solution. And what that does is, is A, it uh, improves time to market for that, that end customer. Uh, point B, it's likely going to operate a lot better because what you're doing is, is that one customer is leveraging all the work that uh, has been done to uh, enable this. And, you know, quite frankly, you know, five, six, seven, 10 years down the road, uh, will it still be, be supported? Likely, right? So there's a lot of merit in, in showing up. Now, on your side, I know I make it sounds easy, but th these are some big investments that you've had to do because it's a lot less expensive to show up with a bag of parts and, and say, hey, customer, put this together. We've got a field engineer who, you know, an application engineer who might be able to help at some point, but showing up there with, with something that's, that's pre-tested uh, just, it just makes sense, particularly to if again, in my chronicle of going from not connected M to M to intelligent edge, one of the biggest things holding up and I'll call this, you know, web 4.0 industrial IOT is its complexity. So, yeah. Whatever you're doing to make it simpler for your customers has to be a good thing. And companies get rewarded for delivering what their customers want. That's right. No, that's absolutely right. I, I think uh, I think when you when you when you kind of take a step back, you know, uh, you know, this company was a component company for a long time and had and had some of the best performing had a leadership portfolio products. I think the bold move that Vince made with the team and one of the reasons I joined the company and I'm so in love with the place yeah. is that we said, hey, we're going to we pivoted years back to be more market focused and said two two truths for us or the two real uh, the two real anchor points for our business is just being close to the customer, you know, customer intimacy, understanding the domain. And I, and I actually think we could Pat, we could talk about application of artificial intelligence, machine learning, how's that going to change things? I think one, one, one impact, you have to understand the domain more deeply. I actually think domain knowledge becomes more important, which is a strength of the company. And then two is, okay, then you got to go drive real innovation and build these platforms and reduce complexity. And I think the decision, the decision we made was to take that complexity internally away from the customer. That's how, you know, thereby creating value. And right. then, as you said, to build, to build these solutions. I mean, I think the other the other thing. I mean, just uh, just kind of a little bit tangential to it, but 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 that I think is really important that we've heard is just you know the other thing is just as we've gone through the the pandemic, the supply chain crisis. You know, uh, yeah. you know, one thing is the world has become more acutely aware that semiconductors are critical and that they're the lifeblood of kind of the modern economy. And you know, we say that, and we've been in the yes. industry. <laughs> I, I didn't yeah. need, I didn't need, right. I didn't need convincing. You didn't need convincing, but not being able to get the car that you wanted because of a 10 cent uh, module or, or chip uh, pretty much woke the entire uh, world up. PCs, no, that, tablets, that's right. smartphones. And I, yeah, that's it, right. And I, and I think, as you know, and I'm going to say it out loud. I know it, you know, but I think it just, I'm remiss if I don't say it is, you know, some of those, a lot of that constraint was not on leading process nodes and the highest performing semiconductor. A lot of these things were on mature nodes, right. which are a lot of the chips, as you well know, that go into cars and factories and various consumer electronics devices and things that people, you know, rely on and take for granted as a core part of their life. So, so the good news is, I think the world has become aware of just how important those things are. And and for us, you know, uh, you know, not only are we investing in more capacity, you know, what I mean, and I think we fared you know, as well as anyone through the, through the supply chain. And I can just say, you know, huge, huge uh, appreciation in the way that the company work with customers to work through their toughest challenges. But, 
But now we're now people are thinking about it more strategically and they're thinking about supply chain more strategically and they're they're talking to us more strategically. And the fact that we've invested in kind of this hybrid, you know, we have a resilient hybrid manufacturing strategy, which is a little bit unique. I mean, we're we want to take advantage of the outside and the inside, the best of both worlds. We want to have not just capacity, but the ability to move products between external factories and internal factories, you know, for resiliency's sake is pretty unique. And the, the fact that we can do a lot of that. And then two, you know, obviously we're investing in, you know, capacity for the future, independent of what the near term, you know, a little bit of ups and downs may hold. We're focused on that trillion dollar market in semiconductors mid to long term. And as I said, Pat, it's not just the leading edge nodes that tend to get a lot of the publicity and the notoriety in the press, but you know we're investing in these kind of critical nodes that are required for these products. So both of those things are valuable. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I'm a, I, I'm I'm going to swing all the way from when we couldn't get chips to the current macroeconomic environment. Yeah. That listen, we're we're in a downturn, right? And and. You know, you and I have been doing this forever and we've seen ups and downs. That's just that's just the nature of the game. And that's just the nature of economies. because A lot of this stuff is driven on on GDP and, and, and interest rates. How how are you helping customers kind of weather uh, the storm here in in their in their in this new kind of need time of need that they hadn't seen for no, you know, that, that's since great. probably you know, 2008. One, one as we just were it's a great 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 question one is obviously we want to be you know their most trusted you know semiconductor partner supply chain partner and part of that is this i think is is really unique this resilient manufacturing uh, strategy and capability is critical and then obviously you know investing ahead of demand and getting out in front of you know, their needs is absolutely critical. So that means partnering with them closely, getting way upstream, because as you know, you know, uh, the development cycles for these products, it starts early. You know, we, we got to be years upstream with customers years. and partners as they design, you know, our, our products into their greater solutions and applications and being on our front foot and in front of that and close to them is, 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 is absolutely critical. And, um, yeah, and I, I would say that as as well. I think uh, um, I think to the degree that we can, you know, um, maybe to take a step back, I think one of the things that Pat that's probably less appreciated as I go talk to folks who are kind of outside the small circle of people in the industry is, look, the demand for semiconductors, and I think you know, I think people tend to think normal people, consumer, think in terms of units, like okay, well. As you said, like, well, in the past, the semiconductor right. industry is like kind of tied to GDP or my industrial business should be correlated to GDP. That correlation is 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 loosening. Right. Why? Because the amount yeah. of semiconductor content going into those systems is going is, is a multiplicative <laughs> effect. Right. That's on right. the base you know, unit growth. So if you look at an electric car, electric car, a premium electric vehicle versus a regular combustion engine vehicle, six times the amount of semiconductors in that car, right? There are industrial systems where in the past might have had tens of dollars or a hundred dollars of semiconductor content in them, now have north of a thousand dollars of semiconductor content in it. So I think so I think one one of the things that we're trying, I think that 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 collectively we need to, you know, kind of get our get our heads around and plan for is this incredible increase in the amount of content in these devices as they become more intelligent and make sure obviously that we've got the right, you know, the right, uh, the right support, you know, for that demand. And, and as I said, we don't get distracted by any near term, you know, near term challenges or fluctuations. You know, I love that long term uh, point of view. And I know that not everybody uh, is taking it. And yeah, it is, it is easy to forget the amount of yeah. what we call in the industry content, right? Inside of a comparing a 3G, yeah. 4G, 5G base station together right. and looking at the difference between uh, an EV and a gasoline uh, powered car. It's absolutely yeah. in, in, incredible uh, to see the growth. There's other pockets uh, of growth. So I'm glad you pointed that out. And GB. Thanks for spending time here and, you know, catching up. Uh, it had been a while since we had had chatted, kind of giving 
giving the audience and myself kind of your point of view on what attracted you to analog uh, devices, uh, some of your approaches on problem solving and productizing and bringing not just a bag of parts to the table, but more of a, of a, of a solution. And I like your definition of intelligent edge. It's unique and it's correct. And, you know, as an analyst, I'm always trying to shoot multiple holes. I'm going to write this down, Pat. uh, And and give feedback. But but No, no, I know. And, and, but when I look at, and because one side of our business is we are talking to enterprises that are trying to revamp their supply chain. They're trying to make warehousing more intelligent. Car companies that have been around for a hundred years trying to make this shift uh, into that. I, I really think you're 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 you know speaking music to their ears. So in a, in a way, you're you're talking to your customers. So GB, this has been this has been great and wide ranging uh, conversation. I would love though. I'm going to pin you down. Um, you only get two answers here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh no. What are the two most uh, things that you're excited about oh. uh, in the future uh, related to the company, technology, all, all your customers? I'll leave it up to you. Wow, that's a, okay. That's a little bit like you know which which of your children do you like the best? <laughs> that's, a, that's hard. I, I I'd say maybe two. If I was going to pick two, one would be digital healthcare, which was very new to me coming into analog devices. And I think we talked a lot about the intelligent edge. And I think, you know, if you think about our bodies and our biology, you know, we're, we're actually kind of gaining like the ears, our you know, ears in order to understand what's happening in our bodies, the phonology, the morphology, the syntax, like the semantics of the body's language. So, you know, if you think about the future and you think about the potential of having, you know, remote, continuous, clinical grade vital signs monitoring right for you at all times i i think the advancements that we're making in sensing and in computing i mean these things started as a little bit of a novelty i'll count your steps into right. something that has now is now becoming a powerful you know it's a diagnostic system that can alert you and prevent people from going to the hospital and having these critical events pat you know um we're developing solutions that that for patient monitoring and congestive heart failure, COPD, and 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 all of that kind of outside of a traditional healthcare environment. All about you know uh, enabling better outcomes for patients, while at the same time I think you know delivering better care, reducing costs, et cetera. I think we're just on the edge, you know, just on no pun pun intended, just on the edge of you know of of the tech, uh, technical capability about bringing these solutions uh, and the impact that they can have on us. I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be incredibly beneficial to people's uh, people's lives in greater society. So that's one that I'm really excited about. The second one is energy and sustainability. And, you know, I'll be really uh, open with you as always, you know, when I talk inside the company, what I love to say is a lot of people talk about energy sustainability. Right. There are a few companies that can mean it in the way we can, not just in that we want to reduce our own footprint within our fall wall, four walls, but the way that our technology can help companies get to net zero, I think is really special. Um, we focused a lot on electrification, as I told you, in vehicles, but we're also working on the grid. And I think, and you would, you would appreciate this, if you step back as like a systems guy or guys like we are, and you think about, hey, the grid's got to transform from something that was centralized and unidirectional to right. something that is now decentralized and multi-directional, right? Or bi-directional. Uh, that's an incredible, incredible uh, challenge and undertaking for us, you know, around the world. And the fact that, you know, our, you know, our solutions can help with the conversion, the management and the storage of energy around that grid uh, I, I think is incredibly exciting area and area. I know we can have an outsized impact on, on the world at large. So if I had to pick two, those were the two that I'd pick. I appreciate that. And I got a little glimmer of that in some of the examples that, that, that you gave, but no, those are, those are really, uh, important areas. So GB, man, I wish I could just sit here and talk all day long with you, but um, time is coming. I just want to thank you for coming on the show and just giving us, giving the audience uh, really an inside view. I mean, 
hadn't heard much from you. Uh, you have a, a big following in the world out there and hadn't heard much, well, in certain areas, right? I, I see you on social media and obviously, you know, all, all the big events that, that you have. It's just great seeing you. But but what I, I think, I mean, I, I appreciated was so much better understanding about analog devices, uh, the company. And, you know, I, I put my brain space and research space uh, in certain areas. I, you know, check mark, I got to spend more time researching analog devices in the future. Oh. And I think more people need to check out uh, what, what you're doing. I mean, your approach going from, you know, bag of parts to solutions uh, can only do great things on the edge. And like I, I told you, uh, part of my company's research, we're meeting with enterprises who are trying to fundamentally redefine how they do logistics, transportation, uh, yeah. warehousing, uh, healthcare, and they just can't do it without your technology. So it's super exciting to kind of close the loop. We hope uh, we'll have you on the show again sometime. Pat, thank you so much for having me. And thanks for letting me introduce analog devices to people. I'm sure they've heard of it, but maybe to see us in a new way. And uh, always love working with you. And, and, and by the way, happy to have you out to Boston or out to California to see us and to show you some of the goodies that we're working on as always. So look forward to seeing you again. Man, thanks. I like goodies and I want to come out and, <laughs> and check it out. I get I get pick between Boston uh, and out in California. That's How right. I'll that? let you choose either one. I, I'm equidistant too here in Texas. So so I want to thank everybody for tuning in, uh, talking the connected intelligent edge with uh, GB of analog devices. Hopefully you'll tune in uh, for more content about the edge. But also, we have day two and day three that you can tune in. And some people are watching all of the episodes back to back and we love you and we love our fans. Uh, but for those of you who want to be maybe a little bit more selective and or don't have time to watch all three days, you can pick whichever you want and watch it whenever you want. So anyways, we appreciate you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are on the globe. Take care.